to you. I pray, O oh God, that you bless us as we um, study about uh, your word, O oh God, in regards to uh, the uh, uh, significance, O oh God, of music in the church and the opportunity, O oh God, for us to worship you through music and to minister also through music. I pray, O oh God, that our people, not only our leaders, O oh God, will fully understand the relevance and the importance, O oh God, of this uh, wonderful ministry, O oh God. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Christ's name we ask all these things. Amen. Thank you. And please be seated. Of course, after, this, after our Bible study, I'll be giving uh, a lecture on music theory and hymnology. So I'd like our preachers and all those who are musicians to please remain and those who would like to uh, learn music, church music, you can stay. But I would also would like to uh, use this uh, topic uh, during this Bible study this evening uh, so, that I, so that all of us will fully understand the significance of music in the ministry. Music is, an, is a very, very important element in the ministry. You can never uh, have uh, a, the proper worship before God without music. And you can never have the proper uh, uh, worship Again, without music. Music is always involved. I'd like you to share a, a passage in, in the book of First Chronicles in 15, ver beginning in verse 16, just to tell you how uh, even in the, old, in the Old Testament, music is a part of, uh, <clears throat> of a temple worship. In First Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 16, it says here, beginning in verse 16, And David spake to the chief of the Levites. Of course, the Levites are, are the ones in charge of uh, ministering as priests in the temple. It says, To appoint their brethren to be the singers with instruments of music, psalteries and harps, and cymbals sounding but lifting up the voice with joy. So the Levites appointed Heman, the son of Joel, and of his brethren, Asaph, the son of Berechiah, and of the sons of Merari, their brethren, Ethan, the son of Cushai, and with them their brethren of the second degree, Zechariah, Ben, and Jaziel, and Shimeramoth, and Jehiel, and Uni, Eliab, and Benaiah, and Maaseiah, and Matathiah, and Epiphele, and Mikneiah and Obededom and Jael and port, the porters. So the singers, Haman, Asaph, and Ethan, were appointed to sound with symbols of brass. So we can see here that the music in the temple is duly assigned to people who are skilled in music. So it's not something that uh, uh, people will just uh, get involved in without any preparation. That's why it's important for us in the church. We, did, we just do not want to sing and have special numbers even in the choir without practicing, without preparation. Because it's important for us, you know, to really stand before God. We need to understand and remember that when we sing, we're singing before God. We are just not singing before men. I think it's something all of us need to understand. Of course, uh, it's now different now that we have what we call the congregational singing. Now, even at that, you know, we have a music, te a mu music uh, team who are supposed to uh, be leading, and also mus musicians and song leaders are supposed to be leading uh, the singing of, uh, of the hymnals and the songs. Uh, but what what it sends out to us is that whenever we do music in the church, the music has to be organized. Okay? The music has to be prepared. And people who are involved in music must have the skill in doing music. Now, that's why as a pastor, you know, I'm very particular when it comes to music. If I cannot uh, take uh, the preaching ministry, uh, you know, as... Uh, as, as, uh, as, as something that is uh, not important, the same thing with music. I think we need to equally approach the music ministry as equal with the preaching ministry. It's something that we need to do, okay, in our church. So music 
has been uh, a very important part of worship from the Old Testament and even in the New Testament. Just like what I read in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, it says here, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Now, what's so sad about the music nowadays, especially the church music nowadays, is the music nowadays uh, does not have any more the element of, uh, of, of, of uh, teaching. No longer, they no longer have the element of exhortation. You know, it's all uh, repeated, the repetitive uh, uh, words being said. Now, I always say that music is also a kind of prayer. Now, it's very clear in the scriptures, even in the book of Matthew, that when you pray, you do not need to pray, you know, uh, repeatedly. Because God knows what you want. So, uh, in order for uh, a music to be appropriate for God, and in order for a music to be appropriate for God, is we need to understand that music, first of all, is a communication addressed to the Lord. Okay? It is not addressed to any one of us. Music is not uh, simply a way to attract men. We're not singing here to attract people. We're not singing here to attract uh, the, the youth so that we need to change uh, our style of music so that the, the young people would like to uh, sing songs that are so uh, rhythmic and so that they're so upbeat uh, and everybody enjoys that. We need to understand that when, it's, when we sing together okay, in the church, our only audience is none other but God. See? It's not, it, we, we ought not to use music to attract individual. You know, we ought to use music to attract God. See? Amen. To worship God. To focus on the Lord. So it's important that we do, when we do music, you need to ask, okay, who am I serving here? Who am I attracting here? Who am I worshiping here? Who am I focusing here? Am I focusing on God alone? Or am I focusing on men? It's so sad. Many churches nowadays have actually changed their music style to the point that there's no more, um, uh, there's no more uh, you know, opportunity to uh, minister, even to teach through music, or because they just want to uh, uh, sing songs that, that are more uh, appealing to the flesh, appealing not only uh, not, not, not to, to the carnal part of man. That's why music uh, is pretty much nowadays pretty much rhythmic in character. Because among the elements of music, rhythm is the, uh, is the base, is the basis of, basis of all elements of music. Because rhythm is the only one that can actually attract the flesh. You do not even need to think. Uh, do not even, you do not even need to, uh, uh, to, to be aware, okay, uh, to react to uh, rhythm. You know, just uh, even, even sometimes there was a study that made that even those who are even asleep, even the plants, you know, when they hear when they hear music that is so rhythmic, they will react to music. So anybody will react simply to the rhythm, to the flesh. So rhythm is actually a a carnal element. So therefore, among the elements of music, we need to subdue the rhythm element. That's why in our church, we, although I, I always say that uh, I don't see anything wrong with drums, as long as drums are accompanying melodic sounds. I don't think uh, drums are even needed if we don't have any melodic instruments. But you see nowadays in many churches, you can even find drums in the center of the pulpit, as if, uh, as if drums, uh, drums are the most uh, dominant, most important part of the music. No. If you're going to look at the orchestral uh, arrangement, you find the drums are where, uh, where they're located, at the back of the orchestra. And at the front of the orchestra are all what? Are all melodic instruments. You have there, of course, the, uh, uh, the violins, okay? And you have there also, of course, the flute and the trumpets in the front. They're melodic instruments because rhythm is just an accompaniment to melodic instruments. So we cannot be able to really uh, logically have uh, rhythmic music if you don't have any melodic instruments. We cannot have any rhythm, rhythmic instruments just like drums if you do not have any melodic instruments. 
Oh, believe me, if we have an orchestra here, I, would, I, I, I wouldn't mind having a drum to, so, you know, in order to, get, to give it a beat. But I want to focus on verse 16 of Colossians chapter 3. Let's uh, understand here uh, the, uh, the, proper, uh, uh, the, 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 the proper symbolism or the proper representation or the proper work of the music. It says here, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Apostle Paul is instructing the book of Col the, the church in Colossae that, um, that, that he would like the word of the Lord to dwell in them richly in all wisdom. And um, uh, the word of God can be uh, expressed not only through preaching. The word of God can be expressed not only through teaching. The word of God can be expressed not only uh, by simply sharing Okay, with uh, individuals about the love of God, about the grace of God. In fact, in this passage, we can find here that a word of God can be shared by means of music. Now, look, look what it says here in verse 16. Okay, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Now that means, you know, the music that we need to have in churches, in our churches, must be songs that uh, can teach, must be songs that can admonish, must be songs that can exhort, must be songs that can edify, must be songs that can glorify the Lord, must be songs that can actually magnify the Lord. See, but songs that uh, do not have any teaching element, songs that do not have any admonishing elements of uh, elements of exhortations are not appropriate in church music. Now, have you, have you ever uh, uh, heard uh, any so-called Christian music that do not have uh, any teaching element? A lot. Okay, especially those who are just repeated. Okay, you know. Uh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. More twelve times. I love you, Lord. You know what it does is only actually is only actually a movie emotionally, okay. But it can never. It can. It cannot move your heart. It cannot move your mind. It cannot move your will. It only moves you emotionally. Now we need to understand that music is not just for emotional emotion. Music is more for the spirit. See. Music is more for the mind, so that our mind can be instructed properly, so that our mind can be able to be taught how to worship God, how to serve God, and how to live for the Lord. So the main thing here, in order for us to have the appropriate music, is this, okay? That music must carry the wisdom of the Lord. Important. That's why it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. It must carry the wisdom of the Lord. Music that does not carry the wisdom of God is not an appropriate music. It also must be able to teach the wisdom of God. See? It must not only carry the wisdom, but it must teach the wisdom of God. It must, it must, it must, it must be able to uh, express what it is that God wants us to do. What is, it, what it is that God wants us to perform? What it is that God wants us to have? Uh, what it is that God wants us to, uh, uh, to uh, a change in our lives? That's why it's teaching. Teaching must be there. We ought to be taught by means of music. Now, uh, have you, have you uh, been taught by, by music? You know, have you been taught by, by listening to music? See? You know, what example of music that has really taught you? Can you give some? Okay. All right. Well, spiritual, spiritual teaching. Okay. Spiritual teaching. We're talking about spiritual teaching. Any? Okay. Yeah. An you know, example is, you know, I, I, I learned the books of the Bible by singing the song. Okay. All right. Now, do you remember the songs about the books of the Bible? How does it go? A different kinds. Okay. What other ways? What other songs can you can can you can you tell uh, kind of music that has taught you? He is last me talking about the love of God. 
or you know, the song the love of God it talks about teaches about the love of God the love of God is greater far okay uh, it's rich and pure okay even it says there that even that even if you use uh, uh, you know all the water in this world to, uh, to, to, be, to be the ink you can never be able to express the love of God isn't that wonderful you know, just description of the love of God is so, is so awesome, is so wonderful, because it proves that the, that the love of God is, 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 is so great, see? It, it's, 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 so, uh, it's such that uh, we can never be able to really understand that love of, the love of God, and it loves us so much. Now, what other songs? Yes. Uh, in my kids' class, we have this song, I believe the Bible. Mm -hmm. A trying God, okay. Yes, that's good. Okay. All right. Yes. Is there anything? Okay. The song How Great Thou Art Manifest the Power of God. Okay. Yes. What can wash away my sin? It talks about the doctrine of what? The blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes. Cheerful giving. Yes. The song, the song I wrote. Cheerful giving. It teaches what? It teaches the areas of giving. It teaches us to, uh, uh, you know, give our tithes, our increase, our, uh, uh, our sacrificial giving, all those kinds. Cheerful giving is also, uh, anybody else, a song that instructs? Anybody else? What a friend we have in Jesus, okay. You know, and to teach us that God is the, is, is the best friend we can be able to have in this world. Yes. Is it? Is it this? Huh? Consider the lily. Okay, all right. So, teaching. Now, how about songs that can admonish? What's the meaning of the word admonish? Okay, admonish to warn. Okay, what else? Okay, uh, give an example of a song that admonishes. Okay, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. Okay, or a song of encouragement, in a way, all the song of uh, reminding us who God is in our lives. Okay, any, any other song that you can remember, of a song that really admonishes? Washed by, the Washed by the blood. Okay, I don't know. I don't think I know that song. <laughs> are you or are you washing the blood? Are you washing? Well, nothing but the blood. Okay. Anybody else? Song a, a song. Yes. Christ alone. In Christ alone. Okay. It admonishes you to what? In Christ alone. Okay. To only trust on the Lord Jesus Christ alone. That He is the only one we need. See? So these are wonderful songs. These are all, these songs will all remind us about God and help us to focus on the Lord. See? So it's not just simply opening our mouth and listening and opening our... That's why it bothers me when our people are not even participating in music. Music is a worship. That's why when you come to church, you don't come to church and standing there as if you're not singing. And somebody asks you, Pastor, I don't, I don't really sing audibly, but I sing from the heart. <laughs> it's just like saying, you know what, Pastor, I'm not there physically, but my spirit is there. But what good would that do, right? Okay, anyway, my spirit is in the church, Pastor. My, my body is not there. Same thing, you know, I don't sing through the mouth, but I sing from the heart. I think for the most part, it's a cop out. Okay? And so when we, when, we, when we come to church and we sing, we've got to sing together. Amen? Because when we sing together, we're focusing on Christ. When we're focusing on God. Now, the same way, all those people who are involved in music, our pianists, our instrumentalists, you know, our, our worship team, our song leader, they must know what they are playing. They must know what they are singing. You know, you, do not, you realize that when I preach, I spend sometimes the whole day or the whole week or lifetime studying the message. Is it then proper for all those who are involved in music to also practice and be skillful and spend time in order to, pra to practice the music? I believe, I believe so. 
I don't think it's right for anybody to sit in the piano or sit on, on, on the keyboard or sing in the, sing in the choir, you know, and, and, and think that I, well, I want to sing. No, I don't think it's right. I don't think it's right. No, is it proper for me to just stand here before you without any, pre without any preparation to share with you what, God, what, what I want to, uh, to talk, okay, what I want to speak, what I want to preach to you. There's got to be a preparation. There's got to be a preparation not only of the heart, the preparation of the mind, and also the preparation of the spirit. Okay, teaching and admonishing. It says, teaching and admonishing one another. Now again, when you come to church music, it's with one another. See, you're not just singing alone here. See? So there's got to be harmony. There's got to be unity in singing because we sing with one another. See? That means you've got to blend your voice with somebody else. Okay? Now, it's important. Even in the choir, you've got to blend your voice. Even if you're singing unison, just only one part. Uh, I, I, when, I was, when I was studying music, one thing I've learned is this. Okay? The, uh, the most difficult to harmonize is when everybody sings unison. Make sense? Yes. The most difficult to harmonize is when everybody sings unison. Because when everybody sings unison, you need to sing as one. That means nobody must be singing above the rest. Nobody must be singing slower than the rest. Nobody must be singing, you know, uh, softer than the rest. Everybody must sing together in a blended way. See? Now, you're going to be able to sing together unless you, what? Sing, you know what's going on with the person beside you. Because you are singing together. See? You're not just singing as one. Not the same thing, you know, in, in your quartet sometimes, you know, we find quartets singing as if they're all singing solos. They're all competing against each other. Okay, have, you, have you ever heard uh, a group sing, uh, sing, singers to do that? Everybody is singing as if they're all singing solos. There's no harmony. Now, even if you sing unison. Why? Because we are actually teaching and admonishing one another. It's all of us together. One in the Lord. It says in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and sing with grace. Another thing we can find out also is that we ought to sing with grace. What does that mean? What's the meaning of singing with grace? Singing with grace means what? Be mindful. Okay? That singing to God is not our right. We sing because of the grace of God. We approach the throne of God because, oh, I have a right to come before God. No. It is, a, it is an opportunity. It's the grace that God has given us. It's a privilege. Amen? It is a privilege to sing in the church. It is a privilege to actually be in the music ministry. It's a privilege to sing in the choir. It is a privilege to play the piano. It's a privilege to be able to sing for the Lord. It's a privilege to be able to use by God to admonish one another uh, through, through singing and through songs. To uh, teach one another through songs. So singing with grace in your heart. Be mindful of the grace of God in our heart. You know, sometimes we, we, we actually neglect that. See? We neglect that. When we sing, you know, we don't even think of the grace of God. You know, especially those who know that they have a good voice. They no longer sing with grace. They sing with pride. Oh, I've seen that. You know, when I was, when I, was uh, uh, I, think, I think the most... Uh, uh, prideful, prideful of, of, of all uh, professions, okay, are musicians. Well, we can find that. I remember when I was music director, okay, when somebody would come to our church also in music, for some reason, they're intimidated. You know, other, other music directors are intimidated, especially if another music director has a lot more advanced degree in music, okay, you know, and, and, and sometimes pianists and organists can be able to see eye to eye because they think that the one is better than the other. You know, it's not, it's not, that, that's not right. We ought to remember, you know, however skillful you are in music, 
you always need to remember that it's all by the grace of God. See? Your ability to share uh, by means of songs, by means of your voices, all by the grace of God. Your ability to play the piano and play the organ and play the any instruments, all by the grace of God. See? You know, don't, don't, don't act like a diva. <laughs> don't act like a prima donna. Why am I saying that? Yes, we have people. They, can, they only want to sing solos, but they cannot join the, 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 the choir. Right? Huh? Oh, I want to sing. I want to sing a solo. But if I ask me to join the choir, no, I, I, I don't attend to the choir. I think, you know, we, 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 got, we, 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 got, we got to make a policy here. If you, if, you're, if you want to sing a solo in the church, then you should also be singing in the choir. Amen. Okay? All right? Unless, un, 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 unless, unless uh, you have a special, uh, uh, you know, arrangement, okay, with pastors, you know, because you can't be able to practice. I understand that. But if you can be able to practice with a choir, okay, I, I think it's not right for anybody to think that they can be able to sing solos and perform here and that they cannot, be, they cannot even join the choir. You know, choir is very important. In the Old Testament, they have choirs. See? Now, and so the grace of God is important. We need to be mindful of the grace of God because we are not singing. We are not in the music ministry to just present to us how good we are. To uh, come out as a prima donna, to come out as a diva, to come out as somebody who knows how to sing, who is skillful in instruments. No. See? We're all here to worship and praise the Lord. Now let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Another passage here I, want, I, would like, I, like, I would like to share with you, especially for most of us, okay? In the book of Ephesians chapter 5, in verse 19, it says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns. Again, this is in a church context as well. It's speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns. I like that. That means when you speak to, when you speak to one another in a church, you ought to use psalms and hymns. <laughs> You know, kind of a, 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 a kind of a singable uh, statement. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now we can find here several kinds of music or several kinds of songs that I believe that that, that, that should be included in church worship in the New Testament. What are they? Number one, we have the psalm. Okay. Second, we have the hymns. Third, we have the spiritual songs. And the number four, we have making melody. Let me, let me uh, explain this to you, okay? So there are four kinds of songs, there are four kinds of music that must be included in church music. Number one, psalms. Number two, hymns. Number three, spiritual songs. And number four, making melody. Making melody means new melodies. That's why it's not right for any church to only be singing songs that are 20 years ago. It's not right for a church to, con to, to totally disregard the contemporary music out of the church and only sing songs that are 30, 20 years ago. And believe me, I've been to many churches who are like that, especially the fundamental Baptist churches. They refuse to sing, to sing songs that are, that, that, are, that, that are new. Their songs are only about 15 or 20 years ago. That's not right. Because according, according, according to this passage, that God, that Christ, continues to inspire people to make melodies. See? He's encouraging the believers to continue make melodies or compose songs. Until today, the Holy Spirit or God, it can inspire people to actually create melodies and, and, and make new music for the glory of God. Of course, I'm not saying that, they, that that kind of inspiration is equal to the inspiration of the Word of God. Of course, it's not. See? But we need to encourage everybody in the church to come up with new melodies of praises of the Lord. Okay? If we have the true and loving God, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, the God who actually allowed the uh, uh, composer to, to compose a song, Blessed Assurance, or Hogger the Art, is the same God who can be able to inspire a person here, you know, in our midst to compose new music. See? So make melodies in our hearts of the Lord. Okay? So four. 
So therefore, in a church music, you need to combine all this kind of music. Now, what is psalm? Okay, what is the meaning of psalm? Psalm is a Christ scripture song. Okay, you can find in the Bible that the book of Psalm is actually the uh, song book of the scriptures. See, those are songs sung uh, by, by the children of Israel in the temple. Okay, that's why you, you call them song of a song of a some, some of them, some of them song of a sense. You know what are what are, are song of a sense? Song of Ascents are actually songs right after they rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem after Ezra and Nehemiah in which they have to go up. As, I, as they all actually go to the temple, they sing. That's why they call it Song of Ascent. When they go up to the temple to worship, they sing the Song of Ascent. Okay? And, and, uh, and, uh, and so, uh, so some is considered is, is uh, scriptural songs or song based on the scriptures. Now, examples of song based on the scriptures. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, the words are based on the scriptures. In everything give thanks for this, the will of God. How about uh, Psalm 19? The law of the Lord. Okay. You know, uh, uh, of course, in the Old Testament, sometimes, you know, they, 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 they you know, chanting is also a type of music, by the way. Now, of course, they kind of, uh, uh, re, 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 they kind of change it into rapping. Now, you know, rapping is not chanting, by the way. Okay? You know? And so, uh, but in, 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 the, in the Old Testament, yes, they have chant. In fact, uh, in the history of the church, in the first century church, they have the, what they call the Gregorian chant, in which even the, uh, the pastors in that time, they actually did Gregorian chant. And Gregorian chant is very rhythmic, but in the right rhythm. Okay, it's not like it's, it's unlike the the, the rap that we're doing today without without any message. Okay, just focus on the rhythm. Okay, but chant is a type of music. All right. So some you know when when they were doing the, the psalm before they would just chant that in rhythmic style, but in organized way. But of course anybody can be able to uh, compose a melody to psalm. So in in church music you need to include psalms. All the time. Or include songs that are based on the scriptures. Say, if you're a music director, okay, you need to find some songs based on the scriptures. And then that means you are what? You are fulfilling the sum element, the sum requirement. Now, what, what other uh, kind of music must be included in church music? It says here, okay, in, in 519, it says here, hymns. What are hymns? Hymns are song of adoration to God. The message of hymns are all towards God. Songs of worship, songs of praise, songs of adoration. It's not about us. It's all about God. That's what hymns are. See? Just like how great thou art. To God be the glory. Great is thy faithfulness. Okay? What else? Uh, holy, holy, holy. Those are songs of adoration. Believe me, there's, there are some churches nowadays who do not inc include that anymore because they think it's, uh, it's an old kind of music. No, it's not. So we need to include hymns in the church or songs that are only focused on the Lord, not focused on any of us. See, here we have a song that's focused on the Scriptures, and then we have a song that's focused on God. And what's the next one? Spiritual songs. Now, what are spiritual songs? The spiritual songs are actually the workings of the Holy Spirit in your life. How the Holy Spirit moves you. How the Holy Spirit inspires you. How the Holy Spirit actually changes your heart, changes your life. Example, you know, uh, uh, the, the song um, uh, types, remember the song, uh, the, the song I compose, I Will Never Fear. That's, a, uh, that's, a, that's an example of a spiritual song because that, that song is based on how the Holy Spirit moved me. Based on how the Spirit inspired me not to be afraid anymore. How about the song, He Touched Me? Shackled by, uh, He Touched Me, Oh, He Touched Me. That's a spiritual song. I surrender all. That's a spiritual song because it talks about the leading or the moving of God in your life. See, it's a testimony song. You can also use that as a testimony song. Another type of, of a spiritual song is gospel song. 
You know what a gospel song is? Gospel song are songs that carry the gospel. See? Example. Send the light. Are you say yes? Or in the blood? Save, save. Jesus saves. See? It carries the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So spiritual songs and gospel songs are actually together. So you need to also have that. In fact, I, you know, I would like that to have a, to, to be separate. So you have uh, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, and then gospel songs. And then, then what else? And making melody. It means include a new song there. Include a new song there. You know, make melody. Continue to make melodies. That's why it's important. It's important for the music director, even for the pastor, to encourage the members to make new music. See, to compose new music. I am going to actually uh, uh, come up with a, 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 a uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you call this, praise night, one of these days. Okay, we're going to encourage our people to compose music, and then we're going to present them. They had, one, they, they had that in the Philippines annually, in which, in which all the composers will come with their mu music, okay? If you know how to be able to create a poem, okay, and then put a melody there, or if you don't know how to put a melody, I can put a melody in your poem, okay? But I want to encourage you, all right? You know? Uh, so, create melody. So these are the things that, we, that, 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 the things that must be involved in church music, see? Psalms, scriptural songs, hymns, what are hymns again? A song of adoration to God, focusing on God alone. And spiritual songs, what are they? They are songs of the workings of the Holy Spirit in your life. How, the, how this, the Spirit has changed your life, has moved you, has inspired you, has actually moved you to work and to serve God. How about gospel songs? Gospel songs that carry the message of the gospel of salvation. Or the or, or, or redemption, okay, and and again, making melody in your heart, of the Lord. Now, how many of you here have composed music? How many of you have composed music for the Lord? Okay, bring them all here. I encourage you. Bring them all here. I want to encourage you. Continue doing that. See, you know. Because, you know, if, if, if God, if God is really a wonderful God in your life, if God inspires you to make music, share that. Because it's a blessing, amen? That's a blessing. Don't think that uh, uh, your, your composition is not good enough. No. Okay, that's not true. You know, all composition dedicated to the Lord is good. See? Maybe we just need to make some adjustment. Maybe you need to make, make, make some, uh, some, some kind of uh, uh, changes, you know, in words and changes in the, in the elements there. But it's important. Okay. Now, so church music is very, very important. It's my desire, okay, that in this year, before the 20th anniversary, we are going to reorganize our music ministry in this church. And we're going to see to it that our music ministry in such a way that it will be totally wonderful and glorifying to God. Amen? That nobody will be able to actually hear and play and sing without understanding, first of all, the importance and the, total, the, the, the real relevance of music in the ministry and music with the Lord. See? Now, I've already appointed uh, preacher John Paul to be choosing... Uh, uh, to be selecting all the music every month okay uh, and then what we're going to do is this all the monthly music okay the the the, the medley of the month will be introduced beginning on a wednesday before the first sunday of the next month that means we'll be singing the song on a wednesday before the first sunday of the next month so that people will not be surprised. You know, sometimes that we all introduce a song on the first Sunday, nobody knows the song. Now, even those people who are singing it don't even know the song. I don't even know why they're there. How many times I ask them, do you know the song? No. Why are you there? And sometimes even a song leader doesn't even know the song. I had to sing loud there. You know? 
And some so leaders would even tell me, Pastor, can you sing with me? Because I don't even know the song. You know, praise God, there's always, uh, there's always a time for improvement. Amen? Amen. And I just want to challenge your hearts. Now, if you want to be in the ministry as a preacher, as a pastor, music is a part of your ministry. Don't ever think that music is not. Well, pastor, I don't have any talent for music. Well, did you have a talent for preaching before you became a preacher? No. Now you're preaching. Before you, before you started teaching, did you have a talent to teach? No. If you're a preacher, you need to also understand music. You need to be able to lead songs and sing. There's no excuse for a preacher not, who is not willing to sing. And makes, an excuse, and, makes, and makes an excuse, I don't have a talent to sing. You need to learn. You need to learn. Okay? Again, I cannot reiterate enough that music is a very important element in the ministry. Lastly, if you know how to play instruments, guitar, piano, flute, leaves, <laughs> comb, saw, bring them all here. Play. If you, can, if you can sing, if you have a talent to sing, join the choir. Contact Preacher Dodger, join the choir. He is willing to work with you. Don't ever think that your voice is so good that uh, it's, not, it's not fit for the choir. No. Okay? Now, on the other hand, on the other hand you know, I, when, when, I, when, I was, when I was teaching, I remember there was a doctor in the Philippines who approached me. This is an example here. And, and she was... She was a monotone. You know what a monotone is? Tone deaf. You know, you sing the scale, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, Do. She sang it like this, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, Do. Okay, so sing, Do, Re, Do, Re, Do, Re, Do. No, Do, Re, Do, Re, Do, Re, Do. Same tone, monotone. But one time she came to me and said, you know, I was the music director. I said, I also, of course, at the time, was already in the conservatory of music and I was teaching voice. And he said, you know, uh, Brother Hernes, I really love to sing in the choir. And I told her, you know what? Join the choir. Just join the choir. But I'm monotone. Just join the choir. Because God is going to bless your desire. God will gift you the ability and the talent when you dedicate that to the Lord. Right. Now, to make this long, long story short, so he belonged to my choir. And on the side, I was teaching him. You realize after one year, he became a soul, she became a soloist in our church. There is a prana voice. She developed into a beautiful singer. And until today, she still actually in express her appreciation for training her and to God for giving her the voice that she is now using for the glory of God. Do you remember Faye? Remember from Raresville that they brought in our church many years ago and she sang here? Faye, remember? You know what? She also belonged to my choir there. And when she joined my choir, she was also not really a monotone, but she did not have any voice. But I just told her, come to the choir and join the choir. And that, and that face wearing Jen, if you remember, face wearing Jen. I think she sang in our church tw tw twice. Her voice actually g got so good that, it, that she was able to sing like Sandy Patty, if you remember. Her range became so high. She became a high soprano. I trained her and she became a singer. Until the day, sometimes she messaged me. She will say, you know, Pastor Bonte, thank you. Until now, I'm using my voice for the glory of God. So don't ever think that you don't have a talent in music. Dedicate that to the Lord, and God is going to gift you with a gift of music.
We need to understand that music is an important element in the worship ministry. If you are involved in music, then by all means, do it right. Do it mindful of the grace of God. Mindful of the privilege. By the way, if you're in music, you ought to be here earlier than anybody. Because you're supposed to be starting the service. Amen? Song leaders, pianists, everybody, you ought to be earlier than anybody. If you can't be here earlier than anybody, then tell somebody, I cannot be there. Can somebody go and replace me? Let's be responsible. Okay? Let us not, let's not allow the music, you know, to, 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 uh, uh, to not be honorable before God. I think we're sinning against God if you do that. Amen? Let's all stand, please, and let's pray. All right? And after this, of course, I have... Uh, uh, a music uh, uh, class to all of you who are interested, especially the preachers and the musicians, please remain. Okay? Our Father, again, thank you, O Lord, for the time that you've given us, O God, for us to understand, O Lord, the relevance and the importance of music, O God, in the church.